and we're live. We're going to wait a few minutes as our viewers start trickling here, trickling in. Jordan's still cleaning the kitchen. He's not. He's just making everything perfect. Hey. Should know that just before we went live, he actually just wrote the Kenigma on that chalkboard behind him. Uh, <laughs> you just chalk. missed it by a few seconds. It's fresh chalk, <laughs> CBD infused, seared chalk that he used. With my chicken scratch. <laughs> All right. I really dig the subway tiles in the in in your kitchen before you. And this is your your personal kitchen or or uh, or your professional kitchen. This is my personal and professional kitchen. I love yeah. it, man. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful kitchen. Thank you. Looks Thank like you. you can cook, you can whip up some some pretty hot meals, and I know you're gonna get into what you have for us. We're gonna wait, and we're gonna wait on that, waiting for our, our friends to join us. My yeah. favorite, yeah. my favorite thing is when I have. 12 people sitting around my island because I, you know, when I built this, my range is right here. So it's like a tapenaki bar. So I'm cooking all of this food and we're talking as I'm cooking. It's a lot of fun. It's perfect. And yeah, it's almost like uh, it reminds me of when, when uh, the chef makes you your, your sushi. Is that tapenaki? Is that what I just described? Well, I mean, it's, it's sort of, you know, <laughs> same, similar experience for sure. Yeah, it's I think it's it's a wonderful layout and I totally agree. And I imagine, you know, people are passing things like food or maybe like, you know, uh cannabis rolled up into into smoking paraphernalia. Um, <laughs> crazy. You know, exactly. It's Canada, really. people. This is legal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's do some introductions and we can get started. Um, so hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. For anyone who's catching the recording, thank you for um, watching the recording. Uh, I'm Alana Goldberg. I'm the CEO of The Conigma, and I'm super excited uh, to introduce our special guest today, Chef Jordan Wagman, coming to us from Toronto in Canada, um, and our Chief Science Officer at The Conigma, Dr. Cody Peterson, coming to us from Orange County in California. And I'm in Israel, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Uh, we've got something really fun uh, lined up today. Um, very excited to be joined by these two humans, two of my favorite in the cannabis space and maybe even on the list of favorite people in the world in general. Uh, so very simple, what we're going to be doing, the man in the apron is going to be doing the cooking and the talking about the food. Uh, the man with the, well, he's not wearing scrubs at the moment, but the man who does wear scrubs for work is going to be talking about the science, talking about uh, what's actually going on inside uh, both, I suppose, the food that Jordan's cooking and then also what happens when we eat it, um, which I'm guessing this is going to be the problem probably with this uh, whole show that we're not going to be able to taste any of what's going on here. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to stop talking. We're going to hand over to Jordan to kind of do a little bit of an intro and also to tell us what we're going to be cooking up today. Um, you. You're there. Jordan is hiding somewhere. You'll also notice that we have uh, two camera angles. Uh, so you can see in the small video on the right-hand side, yeah, a little bit down, a little bit down, uh, Jordan's hands. So if there's anything particularly interesting going on in that chopping board, we'll give you a close-up, but you can always uh, watch that other angle. Um, if you have questions uh, while we're going, feel free to pop them in the chat and we will answer them either in the Q&A section at the end or kind of as we're going if they're, if they're relevant on the spot. Um, so, yeah, thanks for joining us again, Jordan, and over to you. What have you got there? Just slicing up a little tuna, you know, I mean – Thought I'd try to impress my friends today. You know, I have to say, Alana and I just spent some time in Spain together, and uh, that was a ton of fun, wasn't it? We had a great really time. Was. We really, yeah. really, really did. One of the highlights of that trip, for sure. Yeah, yes. it really was. The food got was FOMO amazing. over there. <laughs> That's the truth. What's uh, that? Well, you I got FOMO. Going. I wish I was there. And I know that that uh, seafood is a big part of, of Spanish culture. I've never been to Spain. Uh, I've been telling Alana we need an excuse to go to a, to an event in Spain. And unfortunately, I couldn't join her and Jordan on this last trip. So I'm, I'm definitely having uh, the FOMO has passed. Now I'm just now I'm just in Alana's ear like, hey, when, what do we need to go to Spain for? Or, or how do we get Jordan to Israel? Oh, <laughs> that one's going to be it. And yes. How do we get Jordan to Israel to go and cook up a storm? That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, so this is a really simple dish. And, you know, I, I should just sort of start by saying my philosophy of food in general and certainly infusing food is, is different than most in that 
I come to things through health and wellness. So, you know, the, the, the abbreviated version of my story is seven years ago, I removed gluten, dairy, and refined sugar from my diet and began consuming cannabis. Um, that was because I was really at a loss with how to deal with my psoriasis, which I've suffered from since I was 12 years old. And I say that, you know, I, I wrote every high school exam in the hospital. I lived a year and a half of my life in a tent at the Dead Sea in Israel, um, sitting in the sunshine 14, 15 hours a day. And so I found back then the first piece to my health puzzle. It wasn't until seven years ago at 43 years old that I changed my diet. And, you know, I, I'll be honest, I felt like a little bit of, of a fool that all this time I had spent in culinary and it was food all along that was really my nemesis. And so when I changed my diet and began consuming cannabis in 60 days, 30 pounds melted off my body and my psoriasis started to go away. So for the last seven years, I've been sort of rediscovering all of the food stuff that I've always loved but using ingredients that my body would tolerate and my natural path approves of. So I don't need or want for any food anymore. I make the gummies, the brownies, the cookies, but my gummies are made with agar and are totally vegan. Agar is uh, a seaweed-based gelatin. Um, you know, my cookies are made with three ingredients. My brownies have coconut oil and, and avocados in them. So, you know, you wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you, but I've had to recreate the food that I've always loved. That's what I'm doing today and what I'm demonstrating. So there's three different dishes that we're going to do. One is this seared tuna. It's going to sit on top of an infused avocado puree. Think guacamole. And so I could smell that these hemp seeds were about to burn. Um, <laughs> I literally, I'm like, wait, I didn't turn that on, but yes. Well, that's did. the trick, <laughs> right? It's like when you smell them, that that's when you want to take them off of the heater. Well, so them. that's when you know that's so, yes, that's exactly right. And that's when you know you've released the essential oil. So I talk about that wholeheartedly in every single discussion about food. Anytime you are going to employ seeds, nuts, spices, you always want to toast them first. Why? Because that's how you release the maximum flavor. How do you know when you've released the maximum flavor? Because you're going to smell it as soon as they become aromatic and they've changed color, or more importantly, as soon as they become aromatic, you've done the job. So you remove them from the heat, then you can put those spices into a dry rub, you can cool those nuts down and eat them because they are with way more flavor and texture once you've toasted them as well as seeds, so you, on and so forth. You released it. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're going to get to those uh, those hemp seeds later, which, by the way, I just love the flavor of hemp seeds. They're super okay. nutritious. There's, they're everything, Jordan, you know, and I think that we're going to see them more and more. Everything, um, bro. Yeah. The great balance of omega-3 to omega-6, you know, it, it's, it's really all about balance, and that's what the endocannabinoid system is. And what is so beautiful is, what you were describing, you know, is trying to treat an autoimmune condition with cannabis. And that's the beauty of the endocannabinoid system. It's, it's intertwined with our, with our immune system, which is why cannabis and food uh, can be so valuable at leveraging when combating um, things like uh, psoriasis, uh, but also conditions like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis. And this is why so many people with those conditions uh, tend to use cannabis is, is because a lot of them, uh, you know, report relief, um, whether it, whether it actually, you know, cures the condition or just helps. Um, it really depends on. That. And when you struggle with, uh, an, an autoimmune disease or any chronic illness, any reprieve is a welcomed reprieve. All reprieves are welcome reprieves because, you know, our struggling is what we know as our norm. And so to discover something that's a little outside the norm, and I found mine, you know, as I said, living in a tent of the Dead Sea, which was the sunshine. That's why I always went to Jamaica. It's why I was always going to the islands. And I would, I would go myself. I literally would just go myself because I thought it was the only way I could heal my psoriasis. So, but it ended up being diet. So quick avocado puree, okay? One thing you always want to do, and I didn't because I, I wanted to just demonstrate it. Anytime you're going to peel an artichoke, you know, cut an apple, cut an avocado, you'd always want your acid ready. Your acid is your lemon juice, your, you know, any acidulated liquid, your vinegars, your whatever it is, vinegar, acidity, like a, a, a citrus fruits. 
This one is coconut vinegar, by far and away my favorite acid, okay? Why? Because when I changed my diet all those years ago now, I stopped, well, I really don't drink wine. I never did, but I certainly stopped and I stopped drinking uh, or using any wine vinegars as well. Uh, so I moved to coconut vinegar. This one happens to be my favorite. I don't work with them, but you can find them in, in whole foods, like health food type of stores. But this is the great. coconut vinegar? Coconut vinegar, by far and away, my favorite vinegar. Okay. Oh, I've never come across this. I'm going to have to get me. Yeah, it's, it, by far and away, it's the best. And I'll also add, and not that there's, I mean, there is, and I'll explain this later, but this is aroma-free coconut oil. So this mm. is what I use in, to replace my butters and fats in all my baked goods, because when they cool down, they give that mouthfeel of butter. But because there's no aroma, my kids won't say, I won't use this coconut. You know, words is on this our coconut, dad. I mean, that's not, it's not my I children. My wife and they would call say me that. Out I don't like coconut. Time. Yeah. See, I started yeah. using the coconut oil before they were born. So they Every time. Different in my <laughs> so, house. Avocado puree. All we have is um, the avocado, the coconut vinegar. This is one of my favorite oils. You can omit it. You can, you know, you can use regular olive oil. This is smoked olive oil. So you can buy it Ooh. in, you know, in specialty stores. But if you smoke food at home, you can see the color of it is, you know, it's really, really, really dark yellow. It's beautiful. But it gives off this also very acid note. Um, if you smoke things, if you have a smoker, anytime I do, I take a bowl of salt and a bowl of olive oil and I put it in my smoker and then I have smoked salt. Oh, cool. So, you know, you can see the color, how it's really sort of brown because it takes on uh, the smoky, the smoke. Okay, okay, so this this so, salt is is actually smoked kind of like you would you would a meat. Okay, and so it has it's going to have a very distinct flavor. Okay. Absolutely. And what I do is I'll go around to it, you know, every so often, both the olive oil and the salt, and I'll just give it a little stir. You know, just sort of mix it in because oftentimes it's hard to penetrate that surface. So I just sort of break it up a little bit, yeah. specifically the salt. And anyone um, who's watching, they may have noticed Jordan is an exceptionally good chef, uh, but none of the ingredients, that, you know, he's all about uh, very simple ingredients and very, uh, you'll see everything we're doing can be done in your own home, uh, even though it, it seems extra fancy. Well, and, and it's not, you know, the fact is, is that I've had 30 years of experience cooking very high end food, but my philosophy is really simple. I buy the best ingredients, seasonal ingredients that I can. I do very little to them and I serve them. This is an avocado puree. All we're doing, and it will be the best puree you've ever eaten, but it's the quality of the ingredients. The coconut vinegar and the smoked olive oil are next level. All I'm going to do is add a little bit of cold water. Oftentimes people are very hesitant to use water in their kitchen. And you know, if they don't have stock, they won't make something. Or if they don't have a demi-gloss or they don't have a vinegar, use water. It's all good. I'm adding water, salt, and pepper. And that's the entire thing. Now for the cannabis component, I'm gonna just puree this first, right? You can see. Yeah. Yeah, you can see, right? So salt and pepper. You know, I talk about my mom often. I love my mom. She's truly, the fact that she had the patience to deal with me for all of these years is remarkable. So she deserves a medal. But she wasn't the best cook growing up. And I didn't really learn my culinary, and I didn't develop my culinary acumen by, by learning from her. But she did make some things really good. Her biggest fault in the kitchen, and this was one of the greatest things I learned from my mom, she never tasted her food. She would always bring something to the table and not having tasted it, so everyone needs to add salt or pepper, or you can really add enough salt to make it flavorful. So I encourage you, anytime you're cooking, just taste. Mm -hmm. If you want to add hot yeah. sauce, add hot sauce. These are blank canvas. Paint your picture, okay? So the, the one thing I'm going to mention is, and I, I'll mention it again with the celery root puree that we're going to make, but every single blender comes with a lid. That middle can be removed. Why is it there? Any you tell me, you're Jordan. You so tell you me put water why in while you're pureeing. Not only I that, think and it's, yes, it's there the to emulsify. This is a rhetorical question. Yeah. But it's there because if you are ever pureeing something hot, 
The steam the needs steam. somewhere to be released. And if you don't allow the steam to be released during the pureeing process. I know what happens. Please, Dr. <laughs> Cody. Well, the pressure builds up. And when you try to take the lid off, you, it's it's night, night. And all of your food is all over you and all over your kitchen. And it's I know this because ceiling. this has and, happened to me personally. <laughs> and you know how many times you need that to have happen for you never to do it again? Just once. I will say. Wait, so do you puree with it out or do you take so you it out always, once you're finished? Anytime, the rule is, anytime you puree something hot, you must remove the middle. Always 100% of the time. I take a towel, I fold the towel, and I put it on top of the blender like so. Wow. Okay. That's, That's it. so interesting oh, that I never, that. I never so really the, knew it's, this. it's critical. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm quickly. Yes, common sense. Going. Like I feel, I feel kind of silly at this point, but I didn't know <laughs> yeah. that. Okay. Just while Jordan's blending, uh, a quick uh, note. I know everyone's putting in a few messages here that some of the different platforms you haven't been able to access. Uh, on our end, everything is looking fine on LinkedIn and YouTube and Facebook. So it's possible that this uh, content is being blocked um, for some IPs. So, you know, if anyone's having trouble finding us, I guess if you're hearing me now, you found us. So well done. Um, but yeah, you can try refreshing the other platforms. And otherwise, yeah, apologies. So here we have the avocado puree. You can see that here, right? It's got, it's really nice texture, but this one is all about the aroma. So you've got the acidity and it's almost sweet acidity, as silly as it sounds to say, but like champagne vinegar, rice vinegar, coconut vinegar, those are sweet acids to me. Those are sweeter vinegars, okay? Right. So it has a really sweet acidic aroma to it, but the smoked olive oil comes out big time. So let's add our cannabis to that. So I know that in one, milli one milliliter, right? So my syringe here or my dropper is one milliliter, okay? And it's marked on there. It is marked, but I'm going to get it. There we go. So one milliliter. One milliliter equals 20 milligrams of CBD, okay? I'm rounding down. It's actually 20.24, but 20 milligrams of CBD. I'm making four portions here. How many milligrams, as long as this is executed properly, how many milligrams do we have in each por portion, Dr. Cody? It's 20 milligrams divided by four portions is five milligrams per portion, sir. So we have five milligrams of CBD per portion. So I'm using, this is a CBD dominant, it's full, but it's a beautiful oil, gorgeous oil. And I'll tell you something, I'm actually, there is a ton of acid in this. So there's some, it's a combination of, CBD, CBDA, CBN, and this is what I'm using now. And it gave me my sleep back along with some other things that we can talk about in another one. So, oh yeah, I definitely want to unpack that, but will you tell us how you, how much you're going to put in there? Cause this is important. I'm adding one milliliter, which is 20 milligrams of CBD. Okay. So I'm adding this right into the, to the puree. Now people often are talking about how I don't like my, you know, my cannabis in my food cause I don't like tasting it. But let me tell you something. I guarantee you, you can't taste this cannabis. I guarantee you. And it's not because I'm hiding it. It's because I'm highlighting all the other incredible ingredients that are in this food stuff. So this has smoked olive oil that took me five hours to create. It's seasoned with smoked salt that took me two hours to create. You know, like there's beautiful ingredients, coconut vinegar. So this is really the start of, and we're going to finish this dish really quickly, but the start of this seared tuna with avocado puree and toasted hemp seeds, okay? So let me get to the toasted hemp seeds. Hemp seeds by far and away are one of my favorite all-time ingredients, and they are a lost ingredient. What people are often known to do, and I see it all the time, are those chia puddings, and I don't discount them. I think they're great, but you've got chia puddings, right? So everyone's got the chia puddings and the, the peanut butter puddings and this and that. Oh, no, but is he going to no kill chia is... puddings for me? Don't but no one, for me. Hemp. no one is oh, okay, toasting fine. those hemp seeds to yeah. bring out all those incredible nutty notes. So what I've done is I've created this crust. Crust, I call it a crust. I put it on everything. It's like Tabasco sauce, those Tabasco sauce commercials. 
I put that shit on everything. I put it on everything. <laughs> wait, wait. Right? So it's like a it's like a breading, like a, like a crust that you would use in lieu of of normal carbohydrates. So I will use this as a crust on lamb. I will use this on a base mm, or or a yeah. textural Instead contrast of bread to a tuna and avocado dish. Right. So I've got a really smooth puree. I've got a soft textured protein. And now I need to bring some texture to the to the party. Right. That's what ultimately what I'm doing here. But this is not just toasted hemp seeds. It's a full on crust. So what am I doing here that's unique is I am toasting these hemp seeds, bringing out, as we talked about earlier, all those essential oils. You can see my cutting board. Yes. So we're bringing out all those essential oils. I am going to very finely chop some scallions. You can use chives. You can use truly whatever it is you want. You know, finely minced uh, leeks would be fine. Any real onion product. Yeah, would onion be great. right? You got there. There are all the different uh, kinds, but you know, my mom. Uh, she was a. Uh, you know, grew up on a farm uh, in small town Pennsylvania. She always just used onion, no matter what the recipe was. She's like, oh, I'll just use onion. Well, <laughs> and, that's just... and that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. I need garlic. Yeah. You and know, garlic, absolutely. Absolutely. Use, and I say this so often cook for you and your family. I cook mm -hmm. for me and mine. Cook for you and yours. You don't like hemp seeds, use sesame seeds. But I guarantee if you use almond flour, it's going to be just as awesome. What's unique about yeah. this recipe, okay? The recipe is these scallions, chives, you know, your leeks, onions, whatever it is, cut very finely, okay? You can see that here. When the toasted hemp seeds are still warm, we're gonna toss that into the bowl. What's gonna happen? You're gonna start to cook those, that onion, whatever that onion is. So that onion starts to release all of that juice and what does that start to do it starts to permeate aroma. and starts to to aromatize the um the hemp seeds or whatever it is that you're using you can hear it okay so now to this i'm going to add smoked olive oil salt and pepper okay and then we're going to garnish it with some raw flour okay so you can see in here really 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 aromatic We've got pepper, always fresh ground black pepper, always. I don't subscribe to white. I hate the flavor of white pepper, but, you know, if you like it, by all means. I I'm don't. a multicolor guy, Jordan. I like, I like the, the quad color. It's to just be honest, prettier. this is probably, I see color. probably some other color peppercorns in here, if I have to be completely truthful with you, Cody. <laughs> but my preference is black peppercorns. I've always got salt, right? So... This is smoked, smoked salt. salt. I just took, you know, you can buy smoked Maldon salt everywhere. Um, Sounds like there's just a lot of smoking going on in your house. You made this smoked salt. You made on you my made barbecue, it. brother. On my on the barbecue. I, yeah, on I got a, I got a smoker, dude. I'd imagine. What do you do for the five hours while you're smoking something? Just curious. <laughs> that's what edibles are for. <laughs> and do they last longer, right? That's a, that's the uh, you know the, the one yeah. the one big difference, right? Is that when you infuse cannabis, in particular, you know, we wrote a an, a piece on this in the Kenigma. When you take your cannabis with fats and with food like those found in hemp seed, like a bunch that Jordan just put in there, you're actually going to have a slower come up, but a longer experience. And there's some science to support this. And, and, um, and that's generally what's reported. And I would imagine that, that you know, these, these um, foodstuffs are not notorious for sort of hitting hard as much as they are just creating a very robust, uh, wholesome experience. And so that's, you know, my, my food, my experiences, my food experiences are generally 15 course if they are cannabis infused. And, you know, over 15 courses, that typically takes could be, you know, four hours. And over those four hours, you're only going to have 20 milligrams of THC. It's all about the whole plant experience. It's about terpenes, whole, you know, raw flour, cannabis in its acid form, you know, THC, CBD, CBN. Like it's, it's about consuming the whole plant or as much of it as possible. So you, you provide what everyone knows to be, and I subscribe to the entourage or the ensemble effect. And so that's the experience that I am always trying to give to, you know, my clients always. So we're going to, we're going to plate this. Um, you know, it's actually, 
pretty pretty Time. simple dish. Let's. Do All right, it. I'm put. I'm gonna put the uh, the chopping board camera on the big screen for the plating. So I'm going to eyeball it, but we're dividing this by four. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in one spot. Let that drip. Just kind of drip it on there. And if my palette knife was right here, I would use that, but I will use my spoon instead. And we're just going to give it a swoosh, just like that, right? And remember, like, your food doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I... Oftentimes, I have people waiting for my food. If that swoosh wasn't exactly the swoosh that I wanted it to be, I'd probably still work with the swoosh, okay? I also like, really like It's pretty that. hard to redo the swoosh as well. Can we agree? Like, once, the swo once you've swooshed, there's no unswooshing. It's kind it's, of like it's, taking you know, edibles, it's, right? Uh, like it's not your first rodeo, <laughs> is it, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> you've swooshed before. You have swooshed before. <laughs> Okay, so we're just gonna lay this out just like this, just domino, just like this. Okay, really pretty. Okay, and now we're gonna start to just fill a couple gaps. So I'm gonna fill this space here. You're like uh, painting a picture almost, Jordan. You're filling the gaps, you're, you know, you're putting in texture here. Um, well, it's, I, I really truly feel as though I am. I mean, that's, you know, that is the beauty of creating food or plating food. You know, once you've created food and you know or believe it tastes good, now it's time to present it so it's, you know, so it's sexy as hell. So people want to eat the food, you know, when they look at it uh, before they even try it. And then God willing it, you know, that meets their approval. So. Okay, so let's, uh, let's finish this plate. So really, really quickly, all I'm going to do is garnish this with my favorite, favorite, favorite ingredient or garnish, okay? And we could go all out and, you know, of course, I have a couple more things that I want to add. But remember when you're painting a picture, you know, or you're creating this, this, this plate, you always want something that is texture contrast, is color contrast, right? For me, I'm playing on green all day long, okay? So I need something fresh on this plate, a lost, a lost herb, something that most people just discard oftentimes is uh, our celery leaves. Celery leaves for me are one of my all-time favorite garnishes. So anytime I have celery, I'm always breaking it open. I'm always keeping those celery leaves and here we go, and we're just gonna garnish it just like this. And kale chips, I don't know if you all love kale chips, but for me, one of my all time favorite things to eat. So I take, whoops. I love me I some take, kale chips, especially, they, they're so crunchy, right? They, they give are. you- They are, they're great. So I take kale and I slice it so finely, like little Ooh, that looks like Slice seaweed. that? What is that? What is that seaweed? What is that? Yeah, exactly, like right? Seaweed, right? So now that's just some fried kale. So we have some fried nice kale. real textural contrast here. And then what's the one thing? And you could you could go on and on and on and, and continue plating this, but you know, what's the one thing this needs before I can serve it to anyone? Salt. So the tuna was sliced anytime you're cooking a protein, anytime you're slicing something. Even if you'd, you've seasoned the outside, you always, 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 as soon as you slice it, you want to be slicing the inside, okay? Those individual slices. And I'll sort of say this. Why do chefs season down here and, oh, excuse me, up here and not down here? Well, if you season from down here, I'm just seasoning one piece of tuna, right? Watch the cutting board. If I season down here, that's where the salt lays, Okay, or lands. Now, if I season from up here, where does the salt? It's, nah, it's all over the plate. So you always want to be seasoning from That's high up to, to, you know, to distribute or if it evenly distribute your. This, uh, your I always thought they were just trying to be fancy. Okay, so Emerald this is how this is so how good. I would plate this. It would look more like you can't really see. That. That's really good right there. Beautiful. Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, a bit, yeah. Wow, so, so cool, down. man. Thank you. I'll take a picture because I have to say it's pretty damn Yeah, sexy. no, take it. 
take, take the a photo picture. and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely we'll be posting it on social. on social. Take a photo for sure. Okay, so that's one dish. Stunning dish. You're not going to eat it? I feel like I have to watch someone eat it. You know what? I really want to take the picture. All right. Uh, I need it later. I I want, wait, I have more kale. You know what I'm going to do? I'm so hungry. Anyways. He's going to take one slice. He's going to slip so it out from the, from the I'm end. I'm so hungry. Awesome. Eat it. All right. So I mean, much. like, yes. you really do need the money shot. If you're going to watch a cooking show, you got to watch exactly. the chef inhale his own food, no? So, so you got to let me get – oh, you, yeah. We need to get to a point where we can smell the food coming through the, the computer. They're working on this technology. Smell or eat it. If, come on, eat it. Smell a vision. <laughs> that's called okay, delivery. So smell that's vision. the tuna dish. All right, you know, so before as we I move said, on to the next one, um, I'm going to interrupt you for a second yeah. because we have a question here, and I think it's probably relevant for something else that I want us to talk about. I'm popping it onto the screen here. So Heidi's asking whether there's a temperature for which we should not exceed when cooking with cannabis. And Great I think question. this is an important question and it also feeds into what we were talking about right before we went live, which is why you're cooking with tinctures rather than making your own infusions. So my rule of thumb is always um, I try to infuse my cannabis into food when it's cold. I try to, if I'm making a tomato sauce and I'm making the you know celery root puree that we're going to make next, um, I'm always trying to do it as cool as I possibly can. Typically, I would allow the celery root, tomatoes, whatever it is to cool down. I would infuse the cannabis and then I would bring that up to temperature if I'm serving it warm on very low heat. And that's it. I tend not to, quote unquote, bake with cannabis. What I often do is, you know, my brownies, you can infuse them and I don't mind it, but I'd rather actually have the, 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 the cannabis infused into the frosting infused into the chocolate sauce mm. that it's being garnished with, you know, infused into the tomato sauce or the vinaigrette or, 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 or. Is this because as you heat it, it might change in its consistency, right? So now your brownies almost inherently are at risk of, of and being degrade, right? And, and I mean, don't you think, doesn't it, what you, you, you tell me, because I oftentimes am, you know, dealing based on, anecdotal experiences and not science and I'm not dealing from you know from a science standpoint so if I'm going to infuse um distillate into my brownies and I bake those brownies at 300 degrees for 25 minutes or 30 minutes does that in any way degrade the distillate for example that I've added to that brownie mixture so there's certainly a question as to, you know, some of the, the hottest parts of the of where the glass might be touching the brownie and how that could, do, you know, change THC to CBN, perhaps. Uh, mostly it's going to be preserved. But there's a the question of also the consistency of a brownie and how that can change in inconsistent temperatures in an oven. So I definitely get why you lean towards this. But I think an even bigger part of this conversation is addressing the fact that most people want to be making their own edibles and making any time you're going to be making your own edibles at home. Even if you use a calculator on the Kenigma or at the best, you know, the best one on the whole internet, the truth is, and this is, this is just a fact of science, it's gonna be inconsistent because it's gonna depend on very unique factors about how moist the weed was when you decarbed it, at what temperature, for how time. long, um, it could have to do with, with whether you used a jar, which terpenes were preserved and which were lost. There's going to be a lot of factors going into all of your home infusion. And for serving company in particular, serving, let's say, your work friends or something to that effect, you're going to want to really be mindful about what product you're using and not some home infusion. Because the fact is using any any home infused product adds a, a level of variability that I wouldn't be comfortable with, you know, without close friends or people who are very, you know, you're very open and honest with like, Hey guys, I threw this in here. Everyone needs to know, but you got, you know, it can't be something where you're, you're serving other people. Well, and let's also, you know, let's call it what it is. Decarbing stinks, you know, actually uh, literally it's yeah. stinks sure, at home. Yeah. So, you know, my, what I talk about, and of course we, we, you know, we're on the same page, um, couldn't agree more. And, but I, I have, this is four liters or whatever, whatever this is filled with 
this was aroma free coconut oil. Look at the color. Like that's infused. That's cannabis oil. I made five years ago when my kids were at summer camp. Why haven't I used it? Or why is it still here? Trust me, I consume cannabis all day, every day. It's here because I can't cook. I can't use this to cook for clients. And mainly I'm infusing food for clients. You know, that's what I do. I offer these experiences. Why can't I? Because I can't tell you starting right out of the gate to two decimal places, the potency per milliliter. I cannot do that. If I don't feel comfortable, then I can't safely create food for you and do the most important thing when I create food is create what I call a repeatable experience. That's the goal. So that if the two of you come over to my home and I tell you this is how many milligrams of CBD, CBN, THC, whatever that long list is that I'm giving you, that you come back and you add 20 milligrams of THC, okay, I'm looking for that same experience. But if you don't, and this is not measurable, you can't properly or, or, or adequately tell someone the potency of your cannabis and therefore you're creating an unsafe environment. That's my problem. Yeah, no, I agree. And and look, cannabis is is not a, a toxic substance, right? A large dose of cannabis doesn't doesn't kill people. But I can tell you that I know numbers of people who have had very unpleasant experiences with taking too too large of dose, one that they weren't expecting oftentimes at that. There is also this amazing option, and I want to highlight if we can, our most recent comment, Elise uh, Ochino, I think she makes a great point. There are slowly becoming some home test options, which is pretty cool. A um, hundred dollars a batch is pretty tough, but if you're making it by 1.5 kilo tubs like Jordan did, then maybe that's a viable option. And that, my friends, is empowerment. If I empower you to empower yourselves, right? But that's not very viable for most folks making a home infusion, and so it's tough. And if you're making it for you, uh, all the power to you. You know, if you're making it for you, then, you know, you know yourself and you'll test and you'll figure it out. But when you're making food for other people, there's a responsibility that comes along with that, especially people that are paying me to create those experiences. Right. OK, so let's get on to the next dish. Um, yeah, this, was, this was a celery root. Okay, celery root smells like celery. It's, you know, texturally potato like, but doesn't have that starch. Okay, yeah. this is why I love it because you can puree it into something, a, a real incredible sort of texture um, without having it turn into glue. That oftentimes will happen if you're going to make it try to create this with potatoes. Okay, uh -huh. so. yeah, and the, that, that starch is a good point, a little science fact. Uh, these, this is a root, not a tuber like a potato. And the tuber is a little little plant energy storage uh, vesicle. That's why those starches are there. There's all this energy the plant stores. And this is different. This is a root. This is a nutrient absorbing part of the plant. Just because I know if uh, Stephen Philpot is watching, he would he would love uh, an explanation like this to the science. Oh, he is watching. Wrote. I know. I saw him earlier. I think so, you're going to be loving um, that one. You know, this is a this is the difference between a root and a and a potato, which is a tuber, and and you can go Google that later. <laughs> so we have our, you know, and oftentimes they're very dirty, so you want to rinse them even before you put them on your cutting board. I don't know if you saw me, but you know, oftentimes I'll peel right onto paper towel just to sort of, you know, save my cutting board surface. This is all about, you know, uniformity. You saw that I took a round vegetable and cut it in half. Why do I do that and not cut on the round? Because cutting on the round isn't safe. I always create a flat surface. I always put that flat surface on my cutting board, and now I've created a safer environment for me. How do you cut properly? It's the claw method. The claw. The claw method. Really simple. Okay, so this, you know, your first knuckle here, you sort of, there we go, tuck underneath, right? So if I'm cutting right here and I'm looking at you, I can't possibly cut myself because my first knuckle or my nails are tucked underneath. My thumb is always behind holding on to the food stuff and keeping it in place. You never, ever, ever are cutting like this. You're never cutting like you always make sure that your hands using are the claw, the claw. You always make sure that your first knuckles are protected because if you make a mistake, make a mistake and cut something incorrectly. Don't make the mistake and cut yourself. Um, and that too, you only have to do once. So it doesn't matter what size you cut these. What matters is that they are uniform. I'm going to cut them into bigger chunks. Okay. So really just 
thirds, one, two, and that's it. Now, what's the goal here? I want this to be a white puree. It can be a little bit off-white, I don't mind it, but I want it to be a little bit white, white as can be. In order to do that, I'm not looking for caramelization, I'm looking to sweat something. So the difference between sweating a vegetable or any food stuff versus caramelizing it is color and developing the sugars, okay? So I have olive oil here, oftentimes, you know, Growing up in professional kitchens, I would use always a combination of, excuse me, olive or excuse me, canola oil and butter. Canola oil because what we thought back then was that it offered, you know, a, a very high smoking point, which, you know, it, it does ish. But the butter, uh, you know, um, gave us the flavor. So basically we could cook that butter to a higher temperature, creating flavor and so on. When I removed gluten, dairy and refined sugar... I, Obviously, I don't cook with butter anymore. So I started using avocado oil. Um, and it has a really high smoke point. So now my go-to, I fry in avocado oil. I use mainly avocado oil and a combination of olive oil. In a pinch, I will use uh, olive oil, depending how, on how high I'm going to take something. Okay. The kale, for example, was fried in avocado oil. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this celery root. And you can hear, and you know, you know, I, I'm not doing any proteins other than that tuna today, but you know, the, anytime you're searing something on the barbecue and in, in a saute pan, it doesn't really matter. If you don't hear your food cook the moment that pan or the moment the food stuff hits your pan or your barbecue, guess what? You're not searing it, you're poaching it. It's gonna stick to the grill mm. or your work surface or your cooking surface. And you're going to do what I always call you're going to be a premature flipper and you don't want to be a premature flipper, a premature no. flipper. No one wants to be a uh, premature flipper. No, and <laughs> you're a premature don't stir flipper, too much. This is the are, problem. Well, you're, you're playing with your food. You're trying to flip it off. You're trying to flip or turn that piece of meat or fish or even vegetable or pineapple from that barbecue or, or cook surface to the soon. Source. Okay. How do you know when your food stuff is ready to turn or flip? How do you know? If Let you me cook? guess. It's going to be a smell. No. Oh. I mean, <laughs> smell always helps. But in this instance, your the bubbles food around stuff it. is always going to tell you when it's ready to flip because it will naturally release from the cook surface. So the moment that salmon mm. skin has developed enough of a, a, of a sear, it will automatically release from the barbecue. But how do you create that? You don't start your barbecue on low. You crank it on high. The moment you, that protein hits your barbecue, you can turn that right down. Just like I can do this when this when this uh, saucepan got too hot, I took I moved it to the side. So that's the same thing. The moment your food stuff hits that surface, you can then turn it down. But if you try to and think about it intuitively, you put that salmon on a cold barbecue and then you put it on high. What are you doing? You're cooking that salmon to the barbecue. That's basically what you're doing. But if you have a hot surface, it's, that's, that is a nonstick surface. You know, oftentimes people are talking about, you know, do I use a nonstick pan or not? I got news for you. All your pans are nonstick, every last one of them. If you cook your food on high heat, you sear it on high, you hear your food cook, they're all nonstick. The moment you're, you don't have fat in it or you don't have your temperature on, at a high enough point, that surface, whether it's a non-stick coating or not, your food's going to still stick. So anyways, that's my soapbox. So all I'm doing with this uh, celery root is I'm trying to get as little color as I possibly can. That's it. I'm going to add water to cover, and we're going to cook it until that celery root becomes tender. What's tender? Well, if you can stick your fork into it and it slides right through, it's absolutely perfect. Okay? Celery root, salt, and water. There's nothing else in this. Why? Because you don't need it. Because this vegetable is in season, it's beautiful. And all I did was accent, and I sweated this. I just brought out some natural sugars. I didn't caramelize those sugars. I brought out the natural sugars. I added water. It's sweetening the water. I added salt. We're going to season it with pepper. We're going to puree it with some cannabis oil. And that's it. Like, it truly couldn't be easier but it's gonna be garnished with some really cool things. So we're gonna take the celery root, we're gonna add it into our blender. Remember, this is warm. So Dr. Cody, what's the most important thing to do? Uh, 
To avoid pressure yeah, buildup, remove the center part that exists in all of your blenders. Take a peek and you'll realize that they all have this functionality. You just didn't know why. Amen. So in one of the other things that I do in all of my food, which is, you know, a little bit different than most, my food is very acid forward. I love, and Charlie Trotter is a very well-known chef, was a very well-known chef in, you know, in Chicago. Um, and, and he, when I went to culinary school in Florida, he always had this incredible saying, which has stuck with me for 30 years. And that's when you eat the food, when you eat your food, you want there to be a pop of flavor. So that's why all the food stuff that I create are very small portions. They're one or two bites, you know, 10 or 15 courses. I want you to have that pop and move on. The acidity gives the pop. You make chili, you make soup, you make tuna fish salad. I don't care what you make. Finish everything with a little bit of acidity. Always 100% of the time. It brings out all of the flavors, okay? So I'm adding a little bit of coconut vinegar to this. Remember, dee, dee, dee removed <laughs> and we're going to puree and this is going to be a really special dish i could serve this dish in a five-star restaurant no problem we're going to blast this jordan so what's that tool say, you got there what's what's the tool that you use there in your in so your i have uh, my are those tweezers so i have my vitamix and the reason i use my vitamix is because it has high RPMs and creates specific texture profiles that I love, okay? But oftentimes, and this is why I say, you know, have recipes awesome, you know, recipes are great. But if the recipes don't work, they suck, period. If the recipes <laughs> don't work, they suck. What they don't tell you is, it's your kitchen. Boil, boil, water boils at a different temperature. When I lived in Colorado, I had to figure that one out for myself. You know, I didn't realize that. Food is yours to create. You see this? It's too thick to puree. Why? Because I probably, as I was silly, you know, sitting here talking, it reduced a little bit too much. So what do I do? I add a little add bit water. of hot water. If yeah. I add chicken stock or vegetable stock or, 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 you know, you can add whatever you want. I love water. Why? Because it's not to say that I've never cooked with chicken stock or other demi, you know, or other stock. Of course, I, I love it. And guess what? I have lots of it in my freezer. But what I don't do is educate people on making my food stuff and them thinking and walking away, I'd love to make that, but I don't have chicken stock. Forget it. Anytime you are trying to create something and they call for a liquid, when in doubt, use water. You don't have vinegar, use any acid you have in your fridge. You don't have sugar, use date syrup, use coconut syrup. It really doesn't matter. I love right? it. In a, yeah, playing around in the kitchen is the beauty. It's the art Create. of cooking, right? It's right. Yeah, especially cooking, not baking. I'm having so much fun. Uh, just talking about the pick in your front pocket. Universal tool in the kitchen. What is the, what is the pick in your pocket, Jordan? Uh, That's what you're asking, right, Cody? Yeah, you're Let absolutely right. Back. <laughs> All right. So one of my all-time favorite things to do is blow people away with vegan food. You know, I absolutely love vegan food. I'm, the vast majority of my diet is plant-based. 100% of my desserts are plant-based. Um, it's just I feel healthier. And uh, this is one of those dishes that I know, I mean, I serve it. So, you know, I can serve this in five-star restaurants. This is just really quick pickled radishes. Slice some radishes on, believe it or not, you know, people are expecting me to say a mandolin. Nope, a truffle slicer, truly. You know, like. Oh yeah, it's his kitchen. I love it. <laughs> you know, it ain't, it ain't fancy here, folks. It might look fancy, but. Like, I don't need a mandolin. I can slice my, my vegetables on my truffle slicer pretty easily. So I truffle, you know, I slice some of my, uh, my radishes. I'm, you know, quickly going to soak them. I, I had them soaking in cold water because any time, and here's a great tip for you, and I'm going to save you money. So the reason I like that. that I soak things in cold water, anytime I bring romaine home, fruits, vegetables, fresh herbs from the grocery store, they always get shocked in cold water. It's like, your flowers are dying. You cut the stem on a bias and boom, you know, they start to absorb all the water and, and bloom again and look beautiful again. 
That's the same premise when you're, when you're trying to hydrate your kale. If you leave your kale out overnight or fresh basil out overnight, all you have to do to refresh those is probably cut a little bit of that stem off, put them in cold water, and you'll see, boom, they come back to life. So really? that's what the hundred. Yes. So that's what I do when all my food stuff comes home from the grocery store. Number one rule, nothing stays in plastic. It will ripen faster. 100%. Nothing stays in plastic. It will ripen faster. I don't mean fruit clamshells and things that have holes in them. They have holes in them, but things that are in plastic, remove them from plastic. But I always, and, and this is why I did it with my radishes. I cut them, I soak them in water, they hydrate, they look beautiful and I'll sit, you know, just erect, like gorgeous, like as, as if I just picked them. And now they're pickled. Typically when you have a pickled radish, they've changed their texture, okay? So now I'm just going to, I, have a, I chose this plate because I'm gonna serve this with a roasted leek and it's gonna look sexy. It looks so good. We are going to, um, oh, it's so good. Okay, so did I add the cannabis oil to this? No. I did not. All right, so we have, let's do THC. This is 30 milligrams of THC. This is an appetizer, so I would do this. Let's say it's six servings, okay? So again, 30 milligrams of THC. We're having, we, we are yielding six servings, Dr. Yeah. Cody. We got five milligrams per serving, which is a, is a pretty standard dose. Two and a half to five milligrams is, is sort of the starting point, um, even for the novice user. But no shame in starting with one for those who are, are fearful of, of dabbling. And don't forget that, that uh, CBD can help balance the effects of THC. So if you were eating Jordan's meal, this five milligrams would naturally be balanced through the entourage effect. If any of these uh, topics interest you, we have articles on all of them. So definitely go to the Kenigma.com uh, and read and read about them. Some of them have been written by me. You know, yeah, on top of that, in a few weeks' time, sorry, I'll let you keep uh, talking about your celery your root puree in a second, but I wanted to say that we're actually putting out a cookbook and Jordan's going to be uh, creating some recipes for the cookbook. So that's going to be another thing to look out for in the cannabis and food space next month. Yeah, and those are totally going to be original recipes uh, to Kenigma, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I can't wait for that one to come out. Uh, I forget what I was going to say, but it doesn't matter. So, no, but we are stoked for that. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for the cookbook. So leeks, um, I mentioned them earlier by far and away my favorite onion. Okay. So this is something I love to do. I mean, fresh herbs are your friends. If you don't cook with them, I really encourage you to cook with fresh herbs. This is just fresh time. And anytime I, you know, I'm cooking with fresh herbs, I'm always using the ones that are going to be cooking for long periods of time, right? Rosemary, sage sometimes, but rosemary and thyme are the ones that I would use primarily. And they stand up to long cooking times, okay? But they impart the flavor without having the plush, the little leaves of thyme break off and sort of have that in your mouth. So I've now permeated, it's permeated the oil that was in here. We had this leek roasting for a couple hours until they were soft. And now what I love to do is we're just going to peel that outside layer off because it gets a little bit sort of chewy and straw-like as that leek starts to roast. So good. It's true, but you know what? I always have eaten it and apparently I'm just the heathen and I should, I should de de take that one off. Uh, so really I'm just going to, I'm going to open this up. I eat the tops of, uh, strawberries. I get, I, I, I cup a I lot do of, too. Uh, I do too. Yeah. It freaks a little thin people out, but I like that. It really freaks people out. Okay. So I'm just going, we can see that here. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. I moved you. And now all camera. we're going to do is we're just going to garnish this. So we have a little bit of, uh, the fried kale left that we're going to use. I have these amazing radishes. And why do I have the pickled radishes? Because I have this amazing, you know, sweeter puree, the sweeter vegetable. To make a puff. The so acidity. We, exactly. So we oh, have- listening, A it's plus. It's textures. <laughs> yeah. It's all textures, right? That's, that's what this is about. Oh, and the crunch, yeah. All about the textural contrast. And obviously, you know, you know, as Charlie Trotter said, we always want that pop wherever we can. And so that's ultimately my goal here. We're going to season it. We're going to garnish it with a little bit more of that fried kale. 
Uh, let's leave. You said these radishes were just a quick pickle, right, Jordan? Like you, just you as we were talking, right. as we were talking, I um, nice. Yeah, just as we were talking, and you know what I'm going to do is, you know, and this has happened so often when I'm creating dinners. But like, if I have great ingredients here, I'm just going to use them. So I, you know, I have. You can see here, yeah. So I still have those celery leaves that I garnish the other dish with. I'm going to toss that with that fried kale and make just a little bit of a salad to put on top of these leeks. We're going to season it with some salt. Again, I love using Maldon salt because it crushes really, really easily in your hands. And we're just going to garnish that. Boom. Yum. We're going to take this here and just sort of follow this contour right here. Gorgeous. Absolutely. Yeah, I, li I like the, the little contrast that you did there. You know, uh, it's so funny, you know, celery, you know, the little leaves are often something, the first thing you throw away, right? You chop it off so that you can eat the, the part that has no calories and, and has no taste. But it appears that you, you believe there's a lot of value in those little those Oh, little yeah. Leaves. I mean, that's, again, like, it's just absolutely. Look at that. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And, and it's so just, you know, beautiful. you're Five milligrams of THC, too. Has anyone sauteed fresh cannabis leaves? Yeah, sure. And you can use them in your smoothies. Um, they break down really quickly. So, you know, you think spinach breaks down quickly. Your cannabis leaves break down, you know, even faster. Um, I don't enjoy the flavor of a cooked cannabis leaf personally. Um, like, you know, I've tempura battered one. I know that that's Gusto Greens. One of their signatures, their deep, you know, their tempura battered uh, um, hemp leaves. But as a as a green as a side dish, nah, it's not for me. Um, but I definitely would add it to purees. I'd add it to that avocado puree. I would add it to my smoothie in the morning, a hundred percent. There's many uses for it, but that's not that wouldn't be one of them for me. Okay, so let's move on because this one's really, really, really quick. When I changed my diet, see, it always comes back to everything in my life, when I changed my diet, I never thought I'd eat certain food stuff again. Ice cream was one of them, okay? Um, but this was another, and I absolutely love, love, unequivocally, dolce de leche. I love it. You know, the old Me school too. dolce de leche, where you're, you know, you're taking the condensed milk, and you're, you know, it's, it's just like, I used to do that in, in college, and, and at sleepover camp, and you'd put it in your, you know, in that, whatever the hot pot is, and you, you and it turned into caramel, it's amazing. But I don't eat it anymore, right? I don't eat dairy anymore. And, and, and so for me, it's, it's always about what can I do to create something that reminds me of that, that I can, you know, still sort of, because flavor for me are memories, that, that, you know, food are memories. So what can I have or create that takes me back to the time that I loved eating when I was eating dolce de leche? Well, I created this recipe. And I'll tell you, I take a lot of pride in the fact that, as you can see, my recipes have very, very, very few ingredients. This one mm -hmm. has two, two main ones, coconut milk and maple syrup. If you don't have maple syrup, uh, use honey. You don't have honey, use agave. I don't use refined sugar, so please, you know, find something that works for you. Like even a date syrup would 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 work in this recipe. Mm, I use a full fat coconut milk, okay, and you can put it in a cold pan, hot pan, doesn't matter. Equal parts maple syrup and coconut milk. What can you add to this? A million different things, okay. You want to add strawberry puree? Beautiful. You want to add mango puree? Beautiful. You want to add chocolate? Beautiful. You want to add almonds? Beautiful. Whatever it is you want. I'm going to add one ingredient, vanilla. That's it. Okay? Coffee would whiskey. be an amazing addition. Whiskey, whiskey would be an amazing right? you know, <laughs> I don't I don't drink, so I'm always she not As she seeks about validation. It. She's like, right? That's normal. No. <laughs> so Hey, it's 9 p.m. over here. It's really, really, really simple, okay? You bring this mixture to a simmer, to a boil, 
right, to a boil. As soon as you start to see it boil, you bring it down to a simmer on low. You just want to see a bubble. Boop, 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 boop. That's it. Not a rolling boil, just the odd little bubble. Let this reduce about half to three quarters of its volume, okay? It will change color. It will change texture. And you will ultimately have dolce de coconut. Ah, which just, just two ingredients warmed. How long does it take approximately, Jordan? This is, this was about an hour and a half. Okay. Okay. So now I'm just going to demonstrate what I do with this. I could take this and I'm going to infuse it with terpenes. Okay. And I, I, you know, I don't plug anyone. I don't ever, I don't ever, because, you know, I, I, I love working with a lot of different brands, but I feel really strongly about this brand and the terpenes that, uh, that Flow Scientific makes in BC. And they are who I work with. Actually, probably, you know, I think I'm going to call they're, shortly with them. But they're like, doing strain-specific, right? They're doing strain-specific terpenes. And they're making these incredible formulations. This one's called Pineapple Express. I'll give mm. you another example where maybe I should give this to Sean uh, from Pineapple Express. But... You know, the, the one example I use is, and I was speaking to a, a gentleman about it yesterday. We had a party with Canna Cabana here in Toronto, and we created an unbelievable beverage, this alcohol-free beverage. It was like takeoff of a Cure Royale, where I took this, you know, a terpene uh, formulation called Blue Skittles, which tastes like Blue Skittles, and, and a blueberry puree and sort of made this emulsion and then put that at the bottom of a glass and topped it up with an alcohol-free sparkling. And it was the most unbelievable drink. People don't consider terpenes in their food stuff. When they talk about infusing, they're not talking about terpenes enough. So let's talk about terpenes. This is very limonene forward for me. I'm all about limonene. I use yeah, limonene on okay. my hands before I go into big meetings. I, you know, smoked a bowl and did, you know, put limonene on my hand before I came live with you all. It gives me <laughs> comfort. It makes me relax. So I'm literally one drop. You can ruin your food. You can Terpenes ruin are your powerful. food. powerful. They're powerful it's stuff. These so are essential powerful. oils of the cannabis plant. And, and limonene, which is the, the terpene that he's talking about, is commonly found in cannabis, but it's most prominent in citrus. Um, and, and these these essential oils are a blend of many different things and they're complex aromatics that, that can evoke emotion and take Jordan back to his childhood. But the, the quick and dirty is these terpenes are essential oils of all plants. You can have the essential oils of your basil or rosemary, or you can have the essential oil of cannabis. In this particular variety, he has put Pineapple Express essential oil. No THC, but the essential oil of Pineapple Express in his beer. Love so I that. oftentimes, you know, I always want to give people uh, a time reference, but also something to visually look for. So in French cuisine, I'm classically French trained. So all, all these techniques I take from my, you know, classic training. This is called nappe. So anytime you're reducing something and you want to know if it's thick enough, if you can, and typically I would do this while it's warm, it obviously it congeals and becomes thicker as it cools. But if you can take a mixture and, you know, put a... Oh my God, that's good. A choo-choo train track, you know, a line down the middle and it stays separate like you see here, you know that it's thick enough, okay? If it comes back together, you know that it still has a little bit of time. So do so you have this, to put it back on and, and reheat it? Or like you can just absolutely it reheat it, it at 100% you can, absolutely. So one of my favorite things with this, it becomes you know, in addition to ch hot chocolate or coffee or on top of granola. But this, for me, it's a fondue. For me, it's a dip. You know, mm. it's taking a strawberry, mango. You know, oftentimes, I don't know if the, any, this is a trick or not, but I did it earlier, so I, thought, I said that I would repeat it. You know, I take my strawberries and I'll take the stem and I'll just curl it a little bit, right? So now when I'm creating this plate, people can just grab it by the stem, okay? And they don't have to mess around with it so i yeah. you know this is you know no toothpicks strawberries are notoriously hot look toothpicks. at that alana like, just eats the green she does she just chomps do. it down yeah um while you've got that strawberry in your mouth we have a couple of questions so first of all christina was asking what type of coconut milk to use i think uh she got an answer here somewhere in the thread it was cool fat coconut milk Chaz is the answer as a brand 
Uh, it's my favorite. No, in terms of organic milk. canned full fat. Organic full yeah. fat coconut milk is what I use. Yeah. Cool. Next question is from Jess, our staff writer at the Kenigma, incidentally. She wants to know where you get consumable grade essential oils. I mean, I, all of my oils are, you know, all of my oils that I buy, like even doTERRA, like I use that peppermint oil and you know, sage oils. I, I buy them everywhere. But so it's the same oil that you would be burning in an oil burner you're using in your food. Like well, a diffuser, you mean? Yeah, diffuser, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, what we call them in that, Australia. Unless I'm doing something wrong, yes, that, that is what I use. Um, now, no, you're not wrong. I mean, look, to be okay. This is a situation where we have a completely, uh, mostly unregulated market, right? Where where people need to be leaning on COAs, and even that isn't full. It's not that different than cannabis. Oh wait, I just said it. There's essential oils in cannabis, and we just use them in this meal, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But there's a COA for that, and and we're working towards a model and an industry um, that hopefully will have more and more clarity. And companies are are really coming out making these these cannabis specific terpene blends. Um, and, and really trying to dive into this. By the way, flavors, terpenes that are food, already in many foodstuffs that you eat every day, like a LaCroix or like a, a any sort of seltzer that's flavored, those natural flavors on the back are terpenes or terpene derivatives. They are in there, they're approved as, as, as consumable by by the, the authorities, the, the powers that be, uh, depending on which which nation you're listening from. So um, <laughs> there's there's a lot to, to unpack on, on that specific question. Um, but I think look at a COA is great advice. Certificate of analysis, if I didn't so. All right, so we have made it only a couple of minutes over our one hour uh, through three amazing recipes. Um, Jordan, uh, I wanna give you a minute for people to, uh, for you to tell people where they can find you, other recipes of yours, other things you're doing. This is time for your shameless self-promotion. I mean, look, the in in truth, I am um, my ultimate goal. I say it. It's uh, and I live it. My goal is to positively impact one person per day. And if I can do more than that, that's amazing. I am certainly most proud of the, my new book that's coming out. It's the first time I've self-published. Instead of working with a publisher, it's called Will: How I Found My Health Through Food. Um, it is, they are all my stories, um, all of my pictures and, uh, my photography and all of my recipes. So the book is hundred percent me and I am aiming to have that released on 420 is, is the goal. So it's coming like any day. Uh, it's my greatest achievement, greatest work. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you. Um, very recently, my dad was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And so, um, you know, it's hard to actually say those words, to be honest with you. But um, uh, it's really important to me that this book comes out really soon and uh, so that I can spend some time reading it to him because I am most proud of this piece of work. And I thankfully have achieved a lot in my career. And by far and away, this is what I'm most proud of. I'm sure he's going to be super proud. Jordan, you have a well. you have a lot to be proud of, and I can tell just from from the show you put on today for anyone who joined us today. Like uh, you're you're an exceptional chef, uh, and and a, a great uh, you know cook chef personality. I felt like I'm I'm watching uh, the the legit HGTV or no wait what no wrong wrong channel chef what Food Network there it is I knew it was <laughs> in there somewhere. But honestly, you you this was a real showcase of your talents as a chef, but also the real nuances of cooking with cannabis and not just, yeah, you decarb, you infuse some butter, and then you just use that butter. It's, there's more to it than this. And I, I think you really highlighted that for, for um, you know, those viewers here. Can make Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Listen, absolutely. It's fun. It's fun. It's super no, fun. Amazing to see you in action. Uh, from the comments that I can see coming in, uh, a bunch of viewers uh, have really enjoyed the live stream. So thank you so much for joining us. Like I said before, Jordan's recipes are going to be in the Canigua cookbook, which is coming out probably the week before 420. Um, and then I guess the last little announcement I wanted to make before we set you all free is that our next webinar is going to be on 420 and it's going to be a laughing weed and yoga meditation. Um, so stay tuned for more info on that. Uh, if you're not already on the mailing list, join it so that you can get the updates. And uh, we'll catch you here for the next one. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Say we'll bye. see you next time, y'all. Great having you. <laughs> bye.